Ryan and I became friends through like a comic convention called TCAF. And, or I guess we met online first, but we, that's where we actually met in person. And he liked my art and I had been like, I had read Scott Pilgrim as a teen. So it was, we kind of have like very similar senses of humor. So we hit it off through that. Went to art school and then when I finished art school, I didn't get a job for a while and I eventually started working in a mannequin company. And then that was kind of when I started getting really into making comics because before that I'd always liked them, but it seemed like it was very difficult to do them. I just never really tried. So after that, that was when I started thinking, oh, maybe I can make my own comics just because I hated my job so much. It like really it, like motivated me a lot in that sense. And so I met Brian just because at the time I was drawing like a ton, even though it didn't really have any, it didn't have that much to do with my job. So it was that. And so after a while, he was kind of just saying that Image asked him to pitch a comic to them and he wanted to work with me instead of do his own comic which is something both of us had not done. Yeah, that's just kind of how it started. We both came up with idea together, like kind of like bouncing off each other's ideas and what we ended up with. <laughs> I love fashion. Well, I, I love like fashion illustration. It's kind of one, of one of the big reasons why I even got into drawing in the first place is because I love that aspect of it. So I, I've always really enjoyed that. But for, for the most part, it's, it's kind of just something that I've naturally gravitated towards and not so much, it's just kind of like a part of what I think is important in art, especially my own art. So if I need to do a cover or something or like an illustration, then I'll sketch a few thumbnails and see what works best. Oftentimes I just go in blind. Sometimes planning too much doesn't really work out for me. <laughs> It just depends on what I'm trying to go for. I always ink traditionally. More often than not, I'll ink traditional. But I like, I, I start out digitally just because it saves time and paper and you can change things a lot easier. But I find that for the most part, I think that traditional inking requires me to make more decisions like faster. Like it kind of, you have to be like really decisive and you can correct it, but it's, there's only so much you can do before it starts to like be too time consuming to even bother doing. It's kind of a bit of both of mine and Brian's personalities. Cause I feel like when we started to get to know each other, we were just like, I felt really easy to kind of expose the like really selfish and like kind of like bad aspects of our personalities because we were like pretty similar. Um, I just think I, I really like and relate to female characters that are just like really messed up. And even if they don't seem that way on the outside, I think that it's important to kind of have empathy for female characters that are like really like not that redeemable, but I feel like it's very human for sure. of them to not be perfect and also like not even realize that they're doing that. The fastest I've ever done an issue was probably two weeks, but that was that was me like crunching really hard. So I think usually it would take for a page itself, it's kind of hard to say. I wanna, I always go through a few like revisions while I'm working. So the final art will probably take, I'll probably draw, probably ink three or four pages a day at like a normal pace. It's it's definitely more, I think for comics, it's, it's more important to plan. And then like when you actually finish planning it, then it goes super fast. But the planning stage takes quite a long time. Cause you'll, especially for something like Snot Girl, like I, it takes me a while to come up with outfits. And that's, and it, for me, it's very difficult to draw characters if I don't know what they're wearing, because I just, I'll just be like, I don't even know what they're doing right now. For fashion, I'm always looking. I like shopping, so I just, I'll, I'll always be looking anyway, and I'll try to see, I'll try to like go on Instagram or other people's blogs and like kind of gauge like where they're at, what's trendy now. I'll either like draw their outfits, and then I'll kind of like brainstorm like what the characters would actually wear as opposed to like, they're not just like copying people's outfits. They're the ones that are making the trends happen. And they're, they're like the ones that people look towards to have outfit inspiration. It's kind of more just me thinking about what each character wears and what they're thinking and like why they would wear something like that. And, but also like trying my best to either like engage with trends or kind of address them. I think Lottie's 
definitely gotten a bit more casual. One of the her defining character traits is kind of that she's always like overdressed or like wearing the wrong thing. Even though she looks great, she just like one of her like sources of feeling extremely awkward is that she's always kind of like overdressed or like scandalously dressed. Like I think for the most part, I'm just always trying to make her wear something outrageous, just because I think it'd be funny, and also I like drawing it. Um, I really like. Love and Rockets by Jaime Hernandez and Gilbert Hernandez. I haven't. I was reading like Locus, which is set in LA, and they talked about a lot of. They were talking about a lot of different places that I had also been to in LA, and like just the way Jaime draws and like the way he writes is just like so amazing. And like it didn't, like it feels so real, but it also feels so masterful. Yeah, I just like Jaime's work. It's it's kind of like an aspirational thing. The school I went to, I went to Art Center in Pasadena, and they have different tracks, I guess is what you would call them, within illustration. So there was like regular like fine art illustration and like editorial illustration. And I went for animation biz dev at the time and I was terrible at it. <laughs> so I don't think it's super far from what I'm doing now, but it's also like very removed in a sense because I feel like the comics I make now are kind of they come to me more naturally than me trying to do like a house animation style. I feel like for a norm role, it's kind of just everyone. Like it, it was, I felt like that was pretty self-explanatory. Like like basics or like mod cloth. I was always looking at mod cloth or like kind of like really twee bloggers because I feel like that's like a very like a couple years ago it was super popular to dress like that. Like kind of semi vintage and a little bit like quirky, but not not super quirky. Yeah, kind of Zoe Deschanel cute girl she's definitely more she's definitely more showy i think for her i always tried to put her in things that i wish i could wear but i just didn't have the guts to so i was just like i'll put them on like a really cute girl like they're all kind of wearing things that i wouldn't really wear but i think are like kind of interesting i think my weaknesses are definitely definitely that i hate drawing backgrounds but i definitely i did try more i think when people complain to me about it, i'm like oh no but i i try to draw like 10 backgrounds the easy part was super easy but I wouldn't say that comics are easy just because I think there's some things that are challenging. I don't think that they're difficult I just think that there are some times where I like want to tear my hair out because I don't really know what's the best way to like draw a panel or like like show an action. I've always liked seeing people's facial expressions and I feel like it's kind of trial and error so oftentimes I'll like pull the face as well. <laughs> when I really don't know what is going on. We were trying to think of a title for it and I was always just calling her Snot Girl because I was like, she was always like being disgusting or like she had snot on her face. And then we just decided to go for it. So it just became like so normal that people were just like, I don't want to read that book because it's a gross name. I think people, if, I think if you can get past the name, then a lot of people ended up liking it even though they didn't think that they would.